We have to remember that the COVID virus continues to change. We are expecting an updated COVID vaccine by the middle of September. It needs to go through FDA regulatory action and then CDC will make a recommendation. And we're likely to recommend that everybody get no matter what they got before. Here we go again, a new booster for COVID-19 about to be approved. Actually, the CDC is meeting September 12th and we'll likely get a recommendation. Let's get some insight from Dr. Marty McCary, Johns Hopkins Health Policy Expert, Fox News contributor. Doc, thanks for being here. Your concerns are that what? This hasn't been tried on humans? Yeah, this is a newly designed COVID vaccine booster that's going to be approved based on data from mice and antibody levels in some humans without any clinical data as to whether or not it's effective. I think people deserve to know that. We've had COVID strains circulating for six weeks now. They could have done a quick randomized controlled trial. Pfizer made $100 billion in the COVID vaccine. They could afford to do a quick trial. There's a lot we don't know. We don't know um Really, the stats, they, they don't seem to match up even today after all that we've been through. Right? That's right. There's a lot subject to interpretation because some people point to statistics that are massively inflated. We know that the hospitalization numbers are not real. We know the COVID death numbers are not real. Why do you be, say that? Well, it may be half of those real numbers because we don't know how, who's in the hospital for COVID versus an incidental COVID positive test. And when you, get, when you test positive in the hospital when you're in there for another reason, like heart failure, you get a stigma, you get a label. And so that goes down as a COVID hospitalization. And we as a country, have not delved into the problems with vaccines, right? Other countries have. I know Germany had a big study, but we haven't. That's right. It's been frowned upon. It's been sort of labeled vaccine hesitant work. If you want to do research in that field, there's no funding for it. The CDC hasn't looked into their own VAERS database that has 1.6 million complications self-reported. And the White House was sending emails to social media companies to take down true stories of vaccine related complications. But you're telling people make this decision with your doctor. There are some cases in which it does reduce the severity of the illness. That's right. Uh, one thought is that this new COVID booster is going to be targeting the two strains that are out there now. So by the time it's available, if those strains are still a threat and you haven't had COVID this year, maybe it could be a good idea to get it if you're high risk, but there's myocarditis, there's other complications in young healthy kids. And how many doses are we gonna give to young healthy kids? 75 in the, in the average lifespan of a five-year-old in America? It's not completely benign. These are states up to date with COVID-19 vaccines, but you have colleges that are mandating it again. Now, it's interesting to hear the president and today the White House press secretary saying it's suggested use. It's not a mandate, but there are places that are mandating it already. Well, there is a strong feeling from within the government that this meeting on September 12th is going to result in a strong recommendation by the CDC for all 300 million Americans that are over the age of 12 to get the shot. Now, the last time the White House pushed a new COVID booster without clinical data, only 17 percent of Americans said yes. So they would do themselves a favor to go through the normal process. Some people are raising eyebrows at the fact that the president sort of declared it effective and necessary. There were probably meetings with pharma that were private. It, now the FDA is going to approve it after the president declares it effective. People don't like that process. Let alone what we were just learning about masks and its effectiveness. That's right. If you look at the definitive organization that summarizes research, the Cochrane organization, it's always been considered the gold standard in research. They did a review of 150 articles and found no association between community masking and the trajectory of, of a, an epidemic like COVID. Now, you put two people in a, in a room for 20 minutes with high quality masks that are tight fitting, sure, it'll reduce transmission. But on a population level, when you're wearing a cloth mask and kids can take it off for up to two hours while napping in school, which is the CDC guidance, we're, we're denying the inevitable, and that is this is a highly infectious, contagious virus, and there's little you can do besides avoid people and accept the risks of profound social isolation. I've got to go, but really quickly, if you've had it before, if you've had it multiple times before, are you protected better against this new strain? Well, it depends when you had it, but if you had it in the last year, the, the 
strain that this new COVID booster is designed for was a strain circulating earlier this year. And it's believed to work against the two current strains. It's just unknown if a month from now those are going to be the dominant strains or if this new BA286 in Michigan is going to become the dominant strain. It's really helpful uh, for you to be here. Bottom line, talk to your doc. Talk to your doc. And remember, there's the flu shot. It's supposed to be a good match this year, and that's probably a good choice. Okay. Dr. McCary, thanks. Thanks, Brett.